Welcome to Touch Technology Review today. We're going to be taking a look at the updated features of iMovie for iOS just released in late 2020. So if you've been using iMovie in the past, frustrated by some of the limitations, they finally address some major issues and the app is becoming better all the time. In this latest version, we now get the option to customize our titles, including the font color, font style, adding a drop shadow, and the standout feature here is the ability to move our typography into any position we like on screen. The next feature that has been rolled out on the iOS version is the backgrounds option, which allows you to add solid, patterned, and gradient backgrounds to your movie, and also adjustable filters that allows us to adjust the intensity of the filters that we place on either a movie or photo in iMovie. So let's go ahead and check out these brand new features. So I've got iMovie open and I've already imported a number of photos into the project. These could also be videos, the same thing applies when adding text to photos or videos. So when you wanna add some titles to a particular video clip, all you need to do is to tap on the clip of choice by tapping on the thumbnail and then in the submenu option that appears, tap on the titles option, which is depicted by a T, and then select any of the title styles just under your video preview window. So I'm gonna use the prism text, and that has its own unique animation style. First thing you'll notice, unlike the previous version, is the text is no longer locked into a confined position. You can simply tap on the title and move it anywhere on the screen. Here it is top left bottom left, right, center, and so on. So for this example, I might leave it in the top left section. And if you like, you can also go in and change this size by pinching on the text. So I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller, and then I wanna push it into the corner. Just below the play button and above the typography options, you'll see three new icons in this latest version of iMovie. The first one allows you to change the font style, the second, the font color, and the third one is for additional options. Let's start with changing the font style by tapping on the first icon and a list of available fonts in our iOS appears and we can go in and change it to any of these fonts. So for this example, I'm gonna go and change it to Helvetica New. Once you're happy with that selection, tap on the X icon on the top right hand corner. And as you can see, I've just changed the typography style. The next option is color. Tap on the icon and you have three ways of changing your color. You can select from the color grid, tap on spectrum to go into more detail on the color. And you can also use the sliders to change your color to get the exact tone and shade that you're looking for. And if you wanna be really specific, you can use the eyedropper tool here and match any color that appears on the photo or video clip on screen. So I'm gonna choose this kind of golden color that appears in the bridge. And I'm gonna tap on the X icon on the right hand corner to lock that in. And I've now changed the color of my typography. And now let's take a look at the options, which is the three dotted icon next to the color icon. Tap on that and we can change the style from default to lower third, which is similar to the previous version of iMovie. The default is the larger font, lower third becomes smaller and places the font in the lower section of the screen. We can also add a text shadow. Let me demonstrate this better by going back to white on the font. And as you can see, we now have the white text with a dark drop shadow, which helps define the text and make it stand out better over the image. And we can also go from uppercase to lowercase text. We can add a sound effect for the animation. And finally, there's an option to apply the text to the full clip duration. If you leave this turned to off, the text will animate in and remain on screen for a few seconds and then disappear. If you turn full clip duration on, the text will remain on screen for the entire duration of the clip to which you've applied the text. Now on this topic, it looks like they still haven't provided a solution where you can apply your typography across the duration of your whole timeline. Now, if anyone knows more than I do, feel free to share information about how to do that in the comments box below in this latest version. Certainly I have a solution which involves a bit of a workaround 
and I have provided details of that in another video, which I'll leave a link to in the description box below. Let's move on and take a look at some of the other new features available on this new version of iMovie. Let's tap on the plus icon on the left hand side and we're going to now go and add a background image. Backgrounds have always been available on the OS X version of iMovie for your Mac desktop computer and now we get access to these on this new iOS version. Scroll down and tap on the backgrounds option and you'll see a number of different background colors that you can add in the solid section. There's also gradients and patterns. So you can choose any of these backgrounds and add them to your movie. So for this example, I'm going to add a gradient. I'll use the blue to light blue gradient here in the middle. So I'll tap on that tap on the plus button and it now adds a background image on the timeline. So that is obviously suitable to adding picture in picture or typography. So for example, if I wanna add some text on top of that gradient, I'll tap on the thumbnail, tap on the text box, select one of the text options and there you have it. The text has been applied over that background. So this is obviously ideal for adding intros or chapters into your project. And the final improvement I wanted to go through today was the ability to adjust your filters to different levels. So in order to get to your filters, tap on the video clip that you'd like to apply your filter to, tap on the filters option next to typography and select one of the filters. I'm gonna choose Blockbuster, which has a kind of green tint to it. Now, unlike the previous version where we were confined to the full opacity of that filter, we can now use the slider which appears just below and change the intensity of that filter. So if I found that the filter was a little bit too intense, I can drop that back to any opacity from zero here, which is the original image, to around 20%, 30, 40%, and so on, until I get the right balance between the original image and the filter. So I'll leave that at around 54%, and that is obviously gonna give you much more control over the way you apply filters over your still images and video clips in iMovie. So that's all I wanted to show you today. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see a more comprehensive tutorial on how to use all of the features of iMovie, I've actually created that video and I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. And if you did enjoy the video, hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel. See you on the next one. Bye for now.